Um, okay, so LeBron James, obviously the Cleveland Cavaliers, you might want to talk to us a little bit about how sensational it was to be in America during a time when the debate about LeBron actually being, hmm, finally we can have this conversation, him or MJ, and now it's like, well, people are thinking it was a stupid conversation, stupid conversation, not so stupid anymore. But I wasn't in Cleveland or Miami, so I think the general census, uh, consensus is that everybody hates LeBron, uh, who isn't from those cities, because they were in this state of humongous jealousy about him. It's kind of like how everybody who's not from Dublin still views this Dublin team with a huge eye of jealousy, and it's only in decades to come that you will properly appreciate how great this player is. And like previously, you would say to yourself, the conversation isn't worth having. This year, it's the first time LeBron James has played 82 regular season games every single match of the regular season, despite his aging body at the age of 33. He's playing unbelievable basketball. He's had an unbelievable playoff series, as we all know. The discussion is real. If he wins the championship this year, which he probably won't, but if he does, I think it becomes a realistic uh, debate, not just a debate, but a realistic argument that he is better than Michael Jordan. I think he is better than Michael Jordan. Granted, I wasn't around, uh, well, I was around in the 90s, but I wasn't old enough to appreciate Michael Jordan. Uh, I might not have been old enough to stay up late and watch the Chicago Bulls in that era. But from what I've seen, from what I've been able to see, if LeBron James had Scottie Pippen on his team right now, which would, in the, in the current NBA landscape, the, the, most, the biggest comparison I can make is somebody like Kawhi Leonard from the San Antonio Spurs playing alongside uh, LeBron James. He would definitely have two more titles in his locker. He wouldn't have as many as Michael Jordan, but he'd have, he'd have two more, I reckon. Somebody did a picture of um, Jordan being guarded by a bunch of scrawny white guys, and uh, they juxtaposed it alongside LeBron being marked by some of the best uh, opponents that um, the game has ever had. I was like, well, no wonder everybody thinks Jordan was a superstar. Look who's guarding him. Um, but obviously, Jordan has an amazing career. And it's one of these reductive arguments that we ended up with for so long about Messi against Ronaldo. And actually, the right thing to do is to appreciate that what LeBron is doing is absolutely sensational and might be without parallel given the team that he's playing on. And so you should hold him up as a player who has been able to do this in a way that no other player has been able to do it. For sure, and I think we have to have the same attitude towards the Golden State Warriors. I mean, ultimately it's going to be Warriors against Rockets in the West Coast Finals, and if anybody out there is looking for one of the great sporting events of this year, it's probably going to be the, the Western Conference Finals, because that is going to be a series and a half. And we need to appreciate this Golden State team for what I'll, it is at the moment. I'll go to the Rockets just to explain, because I think people probably have a fair idea how good the Golden State Warriors have been over the last three or four years, but and just how good are the Rockets that they're actually able to put it up to them? Well, Rockets have, were the best team in the regular season this year. Uh, they had an unbelievable regular season, number one seed in the West. They're possibly the best shooting team in the league that we've seen. They've got James Harden and Chris Paul as their backcourt, which is arguably the best backcourt in the NBA right now. What does the backcourt do? Uh, essentially your guards. It's essentially your, your point guard and your shooting guard. They're brilliant shooters. They've also... Like, just from what I've watched over the last couple of days, they've got somebody like Clint Capella, one of their big guys, playing sensational uh, basketball at the moment. Eric Gordon playing sensational basketball at the moment. They've got a team to beat, the Golden State Warriors, but it's going to be a very boring conclusion, I'm calling it now. Golden State Warriors are going to beat Houston Rockets in five games in the West and beat Cleveland Cavaliers by five games in the NBA Finals. But my point is, we need to appreciate Golden State as well. Just like we want to appreciate LeBron, we need to appreciate this great team at the moment because they're absolutely outstanding. Steph Curry's been out for about four weeks but came back last week in 14 seconds in, drained his first three and it was like, ah, he's back. Was he as good as he always was? Yeah, and he's on course to becoming uh, possibly the best shooter in the history of the NBA. He's already scored the fourth most three-pointers uh, in NBA playoffs history. I think he's just lurking behind Ray Allen at the moment or potentially he's just passed him out. So it's something we need to appreciate as well. As I say, though, if LeBron manages to win this championship and beat Golden State in the finals, it is better than anything Michael Jordan ever did with the Chicago Bulls because of the teammates that he had, in particular in Scottie Pippen, because he took a lot of the weight off his back in terms of defence. The Hamptons Five, do you know this? The Golden State Warriors, they had like a... Um, so when they were trying to convince Kevin Durant to come, yeah. they like went to the Hamptons. I'm sure it was, you know, a nice house. That's what they do, you know, it was kind of an epic week, probably the most what epic did they week. Do? Did in, they go on the piss? Was it like a, or are they, is that the type of thing they do? Do they sit down and play Sudoku? What, how do they guys hang out? It's, well, I'm not sure what they do. I, I think there was some sort of pictures of him like chilling by the pool when his phone was still there and he still hadn't re rang Russell Westbrook to say, listen mate, I, I've left your team and I've gone and Westbrook ends up finding out via, I don't know, w w one of the NBA beef writers that Durant has actually gone. But yeah, as you, as you mentioned, it, it's the Hamptons Five. It is the kind of sitting around a lounge in uh, a posh part of the country. So the Golden State Warriors sent 
four of their top men yeah. over to the Hamptons to seduce Kevin Durant because, to come and join. Because he was there at the time, speaking to other teams. Okay. There was talk, oh, he's in the Hamptons. Is uh, Jay-Z sitting down with him? Is he going to join uh, the Brooklyn Nets? There was talks that the Celtics might actually be able to pick him up. Uh, there was talks, I think, of Miami at a point. And everybody had kind of thought at one stage, right, he's on the East Coast. There's no way he's going to Golden State. Anyway, that'd be boring. It'd become the greatest basketball team in history. And everybody hated him for a while. Then he did a series of interviews, and everybody loves Kevin Durant now, I think. And so, last night, or what, what are we at, Tuesday, they played on Sunday? Yeah, Sunday night. That was the first time that the Hamptons Five had started as a fivesome. Mm. The first time that they, and they obviously played together all season, but never started, because they, they played without a point guard, does that make sense? Or without yeah, they would have done, yeah. Started, was, or no, the... They might have played without number five as well for a while, when JaVale McGee was injured. I'm trying to think... A power forward? Could have been, well, Durant would be their power forward. They okay, could have so I'm, 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 there you go. Half read, half remembered in the middle of the night. But uh, the Hamptons Five sounded like something that was um, worth getting into. We might do a bit more on that. The other thing that happened, obviously, in terms of uh, American Irish sport, a big weekend for uh, Irish lads in New York because the Mets have an Irish guy. Great first inning from Colin. I hope this gets some coverage on Sports Talk tomorrow. Well, Kieran, welcome to Sports Talk with your host, Michael Sport. Um, <laughs> Good morning, Michael Sport. Yeah, PJ Conlon is this Irish guy. Uh, moved Heard about this thing, climate <laughs> change. <laughs> so tell us about this. He's a Belfast-born guy playing with the Mets. Had, I want to say, a dream debut last night because he's probably going to play again for a while. Uh, I'll get into that in, in just a moment. But basically, his parents moved from Belfast to Southern California when he was just two years old because of the Troubles. And he grew up there. Uh, went no better reason to leave Belfast, no I say. No better reason. There, there are many reasons to leave Belfast, but that's probably the number one reason yeah. uh, on TripAdvisor for leaving Belfast. Uh, so PJ Conlon grows up to be a, a prodigious baseball player, Great pitcher, uh, left-hander, uh, as far as I'm aware. There, yeah, he is yeah. left-hander, that picture would suggest so. Uh, and did really well yesterday, I think. He retired seven of the first eight batters uh, on the Cincinnati team last night. Then the next batter up uh, scored a home run. But second time around, they had a little bit more success uh, against Conlon. Got a little bit of an injury when he was batting. Like, he, he hit a one, and they managed to get himself home. What the one? Uh, where you get to the first base. I presume that's what you call it. And he, he managed to get himself home eventually. But I think he injured himself while batting, so he's a bit of a doubt. And also, I'm not quite sure how the series is going, but the Mets want to bring in a different sort of pitcher for the next couple of games. So he's going to be put back to their, whatever, their D-League team or their, their what's called mini-league team. Farm system, yeah. Yeah, for the next couple of games. So we're not going to see him for a couple of days anyway, but it's certainly been a hugely positive... Minor, minor league. Minor league, of course, what am I talking about? Uh, what's it called? Baby league? Mini league. Mini league, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mini league is like the kids. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but th that's like, he was drafted in the 13th round. So I guess yeah. nobody gets drafted in the 13th round really expecting to make it. I don't think so, no. Like, th that's a huge kind of development for him. I think he was drafted two years ago. Uh, and he's the first man since World War II to be born in Ireland to play uh, in the MLB. I was looking at it earlier on. He's the 48th Irish person to play in Major League Baseball. Of course, in the early 20th century, there was a lot more Irish people in... Uh, well, the, the college system hadn't fully developed and the kind of socioeconomic factors wouldn't have been as limiting to you as they might be now. So the 48 Irishman to play in the MLB, the last one was Joe Cleary from Cork, who I think he made one pitch for the Washington Senators in 1945. He was pretty bad. But uh, there's, there's a quiz question for you right there. Joe Cleary from Cork, the last man before PJ Conlon from Ireland, who was born in Ireland to play Major League Baseball. Um, the lads obviously live tweet the show at Off The Ball or at Off The Ball AM and one of the tweets earlier on people are thinking the conversation is not so stupid anymore basketball fire emoji uh, we're discussing LeBron's growing claim as basketball's all time great do you think he surpassed MJ Farmer Jones oh shit raise his he, hand he knows a bit more than I do raise his hand oh yeah yeah he thinks um, yeah so uh, thank you Farmer I can't believe Farmer's awake because it's like Four in the morning? Yeah, nobody stays up till four in the morning in, in the United States. Um, unless he's actually in this part of the world, but uh, good morning to you, Ryan. Hope you're well. Um, he's been tweeting the, the picture of the cover story that they did at Slam magazine. He wrote the first ever book on LeBron James back when James was still a teenager, so has obviously followed his career very closely. And uh, obviously LeBron still has all his hair, but it's like, uh, ready to reign King James. And it's like, yes, he was. It was uh, that was one of those, like, oh, this guy's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. And then he turned out to be actually just as good as uh, he was supposed to be. The, a, a big tip for you is don't go to the States during the start of the playoffs, go near the end, because it becomes an addiction of sorts. And I'm going to be coming in with sunken eyes and bags under my eyes. Just get up early, go to bed early, get up early. Could do that, could do that for the 3.30 games. Yeah. And so, what time are they on? 
Well, the West Coast games, the late ones, would always be 3.30 a.m. They start at 3.30? Yeah, so tonight there's a game on at half three, for example. So you're up at half four anyway, right? Five, yeah. Reading the papers, getting ready for this. There you go. No Champions League as well, nothing to stay up for. We don't just lick this stuff off a of stone. Uh, right, that's pretty much all we've got time for on the show this morning. Are there anything else, any other bits and pieces that we wanted to talk about? Did you miss anything else? What did you miss most about being in Ireland for three weeks? Uh, I, well, as soon as I went, there was a heat wave, was there? There was a heat wave like two weeks ago. Uh, was there? Was there like a day? I think so. And we, it just, was, we just had one for the last two days. You came back. When did, when did you get back? Perfect time. We got back Saturday. Yeah, so Absolutely. you got Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They were literally the... That was, summer's over. Driving to work this morning... Um, Red sky everywhere. You're like, oh shit. And actually, you could see the kind of the clouds just slowly clamping in and the rain started to fall just as I arrived. I was like, oh. Yeah, the, the sky looked like the scene in Independence Day where the world was about to end. So I'm looking forward to the weather over the next couple of days. It's good to be back. We're off to Ballyliffin, to, uh, which is host of the Irish Open this year, um, heading up to play the course tomorrow. And uh, I was looking at the weather app and the rain is tumultuous all morning, just as we're supposed to get in the course, so. Wouldn't be belly lifting without us. But for our art, we will, we will, you know, we will persist, and you're gonna be uh, hosting tomorrow alongside. Dave McIntyre. McIntyre, who will no doubt be very happy about the fact that he's not a belly lifting, but at least it's gonna be raining, so he can rub that in. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all we've got time for on the show this morning, I hope you enjoyed it. As ever, if you wanna get involved in the conversations that we've been having, then we'd love to hear from you. You can follow us on Twitter, at AM is the specific uh, Twitter handle for the show. Make sure you turn on your subscriptions and live notifications for that. And any time that we go live, you'll get us uh, youtube.com forward slash off the ball as well. 